understandable, just click out. Um, I am chewing my favorite gum, extra spearmint. And I am going to tell you guys what I just finished reading, what I'm currently reading, and like what's, what's on deck, all right? Um, I do need some suggestions. I don't know if I really do because I have a really long DVR, but I'm running into this problem of these thriller books all having two similar themes, so they're like blending together in my head. Um, you know, like you're like the son or daughter of a murderer, or serial killer type person. The um, the main character, usually a woman, having like a drug or alcohol problem or she's like abusing her, her prescription bed so she's not really totally sure what what she's seeing or people are not sure whether they can believe her or not um and then of course the um who am I married to do they have a am I married to a killer type thrillers which there's gotta be more out there I don't remember running into these similar things last year, like nothing this close. Why am I reading them all back to back and they're all kind of tying it together? I don't know. It's just bad luck, I guess. And it's not that they're bad. They're good thrillers. They're just too similar for me to read back to back, including this one. This one is Flicker in the Dark. Um, when Chloe Davis was 12, six teenage girls went missing. This is my Kindle. Kindle Oasis. Six teenage girls went missing in her small town, in her small Louisiana town. By the end of summer, her own father had confessed to the crimes and was put away for life, leading Chloe and the rest of her family to grapple with the truth and try to move forward while dealing with the aftermath. Now, 20 years later, Chloe is a psychologist Baton Rouge and getting ready for her wedding. While well, she finally has a fragile grasp on the happiness she worked so hard to achieve, she sometimes feels as out of control of her own life as the troubled teens who are her patients. So when a local teenage girl goes missing and then another, that terrifying summer comes crashing back. Is she paranoid? Seeing parallels from her past that aren't actually there. Or for the second time in her life, is Chloe about to unmask a killer? Now this is a uh, debut from the author Stacy Willingham. Masterfully done lyrical thriller is certain to be the launch of an amazing career. A Liquor in the Dark is eerily compelling to the very last page. It was good. It would probably make a really good movie. Um, but like I said, I just read some other book. Oh, what was it called? Um, the Locked Door. And that one's about a, da a daughter of a serial killer. And her father had been locking people in their basement. And he was locked. Was he? I don't remember if he was dead or locked up. But she was a professional now. She wasn't a psychologist, but she was a surgeon. she was also abusing her meds maybe I can't really remember but it was just too similar to, I shouldn't have read them that close together okay what I'm reading now go to this is by Walter Mosley who I believe if you don't watch the, the show Snowfall it's probably probably some of the best TV out right now and season five is coming in like a week um but you can catch up on hulu it's called snowfall and walter mosley is like i don't know if he writes the scripts or what but he, he does have something to do with that show um now this is called um Down the River Unto the Sea, which is a weird title. Doesn't tell you much about it. Joe King Oliver is one of NYPD's finest investigators until he was framed for sexual assault. 
by unknown enemies within the forest. A decade has passed since the release from Rikers, and he now runs a private detective agency with the help of his teenage daughter. Physically and emotionally broken by the brutality he suffered while behind bars, he leads a solitary life, his work and his daughter the only light. When he receives a letter from his accuser confessing that she has paid to frame him years ago, she was paid to frame him years ago. King decides to find out who wanted him gone and why. On a quest for the justice he was denied, King agrees to help a radical black journalist accused of killing two on-duty police officers. Their cases intertwine across the years and expose a pattern of corruption and brutality wheeled against the black men, women, and children whose lives the law destroyed. All while two lives hang in the balance clients and his own. So this would be a good author to read this month. You know, it is Black History Month and he's a great author. Last February, I read a lot of nonfiction for Black History Month and this year I'm trying to read more fiction. Okay. I am also reading a Peter Swanson. Sorry, I got an inch. A Peter Swanson novel. If you've never read a Peter Swanson, they're pretty
she might have harmed him, something like that. So it's kind of, I mean, the general theme is that she's raising a kid that she thinks has the potential to be uh, a killer. All right. How can you trust if you can't trust yourself? This is, um, I'll have to look at what this is by, and I don't know if this is translated or not, if this was written in another language, possibly. If you can't trust yourself, early one morning, 26 year old Eugene wakes up to a strange metallic smell at a phone call from his brother asking if everything is all right at home. He missed a call from their mother in the middle of the night. Eugene discovers her murdered body lying in a pool of blood at the bottom of the stairs in their stylish swell duplex. He can't remember much about the night having suffered from seizures for most of his life. Eugene often has trouble with his memory. All he has is a faint impression of his mother calling his name. But when she, but was she calling for help or begging for her life? Thus begins Eugene's frantic three-day search to uncover what happened that night and to finally learn the truth about himself and his family. A shocking and addictive psychological thriller, The Good Son explores the mysteries of the mind and memory. The twisted relationship between a mother and a son with incredible urgency. So, I do like stories um, about, I mean, there's probably nothing worse than thinking your own child is capable of horrible, horrible things. But the even scarier part is the parents that don't believe their children are capable of those things while they're and like letting these problems get worse and not getting them help. They're just like covering everything up. I don't know, I watch a lot of true crime and sometimes you come across these parents that just totally enable this, these behaviors or didn't address them at all. It just, I don't know. Let's stick with the fiction for now. Um, so that is on deck.